Okay, so this is a question that I get asked a fair bit, which is basically how do I how do I set up a device on a brand new computer or a computer that I have not synced with before. So the first step is to open up iTunes. Once that's opened up, go to Edit, and then Preferences, and when that window opens up to the Devices heading. Now, this is the one that you want to tick on, Prevent iPod, iPhone, iPad from syncing automatically, and click OK. Now, that's the step to do before plugging in the iPod, or iPhone, or iPad, or whatever it is. So, once that's been uh, a little ticked there, so you can plug in your device next. In my case, I'm actually using an iPod. I don't know if you could hear it there. But, um, okay, there we go. No, I don't want to update. I'll save that for another video. Um, got my device there. So, let's start with apps. Apps are probably the, the easiest to get wrong, as well as music. Uh, if you attempt to synchronize apps with absolutely nothing in your library, it'll obviously give you a warning first that you know basically it'll be replaced and by replace I mean it'll be deleted off your device so you don't really want to do that you'd want to fill up your library with those apps first and the way you'd go about doing that is right clicking directly on the name of your device and you can go transfer purchases now chances are it'll come up with a message like this the computer's not authorized yet you can click on authorize and you can then go in and type your Apple ID and password now I'm not going to put mine in not on the video at least but it will go ahead and transfer them to the library now music is a, a little bit more tricky um, there's two types of music involved there's music that you've purchased with an Apple ID and there's music that you've purchased or not purchased sorry that you've got from another source whether it be the internet, torrents, CDs, whatever. Now there's a whole copyright issue involved here and there's third party apps that'll, that'll get them into your library for you but officially there's no real way to get that type of music into the library. Um, you'd have to recopy it back in yourself some other method which I'm not really going to go into yet. So once that's done, I mean again if you do tick that you'll get a warning of some kind so avoid that until your library has the music in it that you want on the device. If for example you put one song in the library and you attempt to sync then only one song will appear on your device and the rest will be deleted so keep that in mind. Um, movies, TV shows, same idea. If they're not in the library then they won't be on your device when you sync either so avoid taking those ones. Um, I'll skip photos for now because I'll come back to that. The main one, or the, the most important thing that people are concerned with, are usually contacts with their iPhone. Um, I've heard of many people having literally 5,000, 2,000, whatever, contacts stored up over two years, three years, five years, whatever, and they've lost them all in one shot. So it's not a good thing to have to go through. Um, this will only work if iCloud's turned off. If you attempt to sync with iCloud turned on, it's not going to go to its desired you know, destination. It'll, um, it'll bring them from the computer to the device, but um, not vice versa. So the first step is to turn off iCloud contacts if you want a you know, like a copy stored on your computer. Um, once that's done, of course, or if you don't have iCloud turned on at all, um, Windows contacts is my preferred method, of course. There'll be Outlook or, or Gmail or Yahoo or whatever you prefer, but um, Windows contacts is my preferred method. Now, at the moment, if I actually have a look here, users little one contacts you can see here I've only got one contact which is the default username and icon um, nothing else but if I then go sync contacts with um, by the way that'd be unticked by default um, you'd have to tick that one yourself and go apply you can see iTunes just going through and doing its thing back up like normal preparing the sync and that should bring my contacts across I'll find out in a moment okay so back to C drive back to users little one and contacts and again there's my two test contacts 
So that was actually supposed to be a smiley face, but obviously Windows doesn't like that. Um, that's more or less how it works. So it'll bring your contacts across. Now, depending on what percentage of contacts change, um, you might have actually seen this little thing here. If obviously more than 5% have changed or more than 50 or whatever you have set, it'll come up for a message asking if you want to merge or replace. Um, and if you get that message, always merge. That will keep your data intact. Now, if for whatever reason contacts weren't going across, chances are it's probably because you have iCloud turned on. Just be sure to check that. Um, you don't want both to sync at the same time. That'll cause duplicates, and that's a pain in the ass to kind of sort out. The only other part left is, is photos. So again, any photos on your camera roll, those will be fine. They're not going to get deleted. Any photos that are on another folder in your device. Now, those are at risk. In this case here, I've actually got a, um, a test folder I've previously synced with. Um, if I attempted to sync on a new, well, completely new folder, let's just say, those are my test ones there, by the way. Um, let's say I want to go to pictures, sample pictures, uh, let's make a new folder actually. Um, test 3, that'll do. And test 3 has absolutely nothing in it, so select that folder. If I then go apply, that'll delete my photos off my device. And that's not a good thing. Um, I probably had a copy of them there somewhere, but the idea is that you actually go into Apple device, internal storage, and this DCIM folder, it'll actually have your photos in there. You can see I've got like 27 files in there. I'm not going to open up, open them up now for privacy reasons, but uh, there are photos on there. And normally what you would do is copy that folder, paste that folder to your desktop somewhere. And once it's been transferred there, then you can pick and choose the, um, I guess, pictures or videos or whatever that you have on there that you want to preserve and um, put them in a folder that you want to synchronize them with and then you can choose that folder to synchronize with in here and continue adding photos like you normally would. Um, again, let's say test 3 only had, well it doesn't have any photos, but if it only had one photo, one photo would have gone to my iPod, it would have deleted the rest of my photos excluding my camera roll. So the camera roll still would have been safe. Everything else would have been deleted though. Um, so that's the only other thing worth keeping in mind. So in summary, most important thing, before you plug anything in, go to edit, go to preferences, and be sure to tick that little box. Um, once you're in there, then you'll click on your device's name to bring up this summary page and just go to the various headings, make sure everything's configured correctly. It'll be all turned off by default. Um, avoid ticking any of these ones until your library's filled up with that content, and you should be right.